gave me the best life he could. Um, you know, I, I had issues growing up, but there was never, um, I used to think that they were the reasons I drank, but that's not the case. The reason I drink is because I'm an alcoholic, <laughs> you know? Um, I wanted there to be a reason and there's, there's just really not. Um, I think that I was given a gift of alcoholism and today I don't look at it as a burden. Um, I'm really grateful to be an alcoholic, surprisingly enough. Um, I've done drugs since I was 15, you know, drugs, drink, whatever. The first time I drank, I blacked out. Um, so I was never, never doubted that I was an alcoholic. Like I knew, I knew that I was different from other people, right? Like it was, it was a thing. And, um, and, uh, was that six years ago? No, it was more than six years ago. Seven, a little over seven years ago, um, I finally got caught by the law, right? And that was my, my time to get sober, right? I got a nudge from the judge. Um, I, I went to treatment when I was 17, never took it seriously. You know, like I, I genuinely thought that dying an alcoholic was an okay death. Um, and there, there was something, I went to jail for five days and I will never forget this lady in jail um, because I'm a people person. Like if I like you, I like you. And if I don't like you, you're a very long list of people that I don't like. So um, I fell in love with this lady and um, she was an older lady and she, she was a, a user. Um, and she just looked at me and she cried and I was 23 and, and she just cried and, and she asked me to please get my life together and not be like her. Um, and I remember her name. Like, I just got chills. I, I remember this lady's face and her name, and I cannot tell you why. I, I, I don't know. Um, but when I got out of jail, I, of course, got loaded. And, um, but I remembered her, and I wanted, I wanted to get sober for some reason. It was like the first time that I actually, um, and I remember getting out of jail, getting loaded, and sitting in my kitchen of my trap apartment, and um, crying and I Googled a treatment center and I got sober for the first time and I, and I tried this deal. Um, and I got two years and I lived in Oxford, you know, I, I did the things on the outside um, and I could recite you every book of the word and, and I, was a, I was a meeting goer and um, for external purposes, like I looked great uh, and I was so sick. Like, oh my goodness, I, um, would go to a meeting and size everybody up, go to a meeting and judge you, take your inventory. Cause that's what I thought this program was about, right? Like I thought we got sober to like tell each other how to live. You know, <laughs> that's not the case. Um, go figure. Uh, that's why you get a sponsor. And, um, lo and behold, two years in, um, of white knuckling it and lying about a relapse that I had, you know, I mean, I, I was living in an Oxford house and I didn't have the sobriety date I claimed, you know, I had smoked weed behind their back and like, didn't get caught. And I, I got away with it. Right. Like I, that, that was my recovery in a nutshell before just, I was a liar. I had never changed. I didn't change anything. Um, and so fast forward, you know, I had a warrant was running for three years and, and living in this like fantasy la la land. <laughs> and, um, I decided to get sober this time last year. I, I went to, this today, I was actually in Alabama a year ago with, with, for my sister's birthday. And um, just in case you like, like drugs aren't legal there, like they're here. So it's, it's kind of different, you know, um, and all I could do was drink. And I'm, I'm a garden variety. Okay. Like I want all the things that I can put in my body. I don't, I don't, I don't discriminate. Um, and all I could do was drink. And it was my sister's birthday and I ruined my sister's birthday, like ruined my sister's birthday. Um, and uh, I flew back home early. And the first thing I wanted when I got home, you know, my roommate was gracious enough to, to watch my dogs. The first thing I asked him was I made sure that he had brought something with him to pick me up at the airport so I could get loaded in the car. Like that was all I cared about. Like I didn't care about... I didn't care about anything other than just like not feeling the way that I felt. Um, and, uh, 
the beginning of the year last year, I checked myself into Fairfax and I asked for help for the first time and like actually meant it. Like, um, I, I don't know how to describe this time of being sober other than it's actually real for the first time ever. Um, I have that desperation, right? I, I can vividly remember calling my dad and telling my dad that I didn't want to do life anymore. Right. And I, like, I knew that life gets better, right. Like logically, practically, sensibly, like life's good. You know, you see people smile, you see people happy, like it's sensible. Um, I didn't want it. Like I genuinely didn't want it because I didn't think that I was good enough or that I had the capability to have a good life. I really didn't. I thought that I was that gutter junkie. I thought I was a rat. You know, I, I never thought I could get out of that. Um, and today I'm a, I'm a woman of integrity and honor, which is wild. Um, I, I met a woman, um, who has changed my life. Um, we did Christmas this morning and, um, this woman has saved my life. Um, she has not left me no matter how ugly it gets. Um, and no matter how many times I've pushed her away, this woman has loved me. And, um, I believe that that's what this program is about. Right. And, and the man that introduced me, I met him and, um, our home group is full of people that have time and every single, but like one of them have what I want. Right. Like, and I, I finally feel like I'm seeing what AA is about, like genuinely, um, because I had this like idea that when I got sober last time, it was just, it was high school. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, it was just a bunch of shit talking, right? Like, I, like I would go to meetings and then like get in the car on the way home to the Oxford house and we would talk shit about people, you know, like that was like, it was the vibe. You know, <laughs> um, and today, if like anybody were to talk shit about somebody that I care about, like I would shut it down so quickly. And I don't know who that is. That's not me. Um, that's God working through me. Right. And, and I firmly believe that I needed to go through what I needed to go through. Um, I'm a pain in the ass. Like my recovery isn't easy. Um, when I first got sober this time, I balked. I think it took me took me three months to find a sponsor. It took me six months to actually trust her. Like I wouldn't tell her anything. And then when I did start to tell her stuff, I would push her away and she would tell me that she wasn't going to go anywhere. And that has proved true. Um, and today I don't live my life for me anymore. Like in a weird way I do. Right. Like, um, but nothing feels better than like coming to a room and seeing somebody that like I would never be friends with Lee. Like, let's be real. <laughs> let's, we would not be friends. You're the you're the studious guy that drinks scotch at the end of the bar. Like, I'm the trash bag that shoots tequila and then gets by guys to buy our drinks. Like, that's who I am, right? We are we are on two total opposites of the spectrum. Um, but when I come to this room, there's no one that I love to see more, right? Um, and that's that's what's cool about this program to me is my sponsor's a 73 year old lady, like. I didn't know, but still like, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's just things like that where I'm like, okay, like, is it odd or is it God working in my life? Like, I don't, I no longer look at people and size them up for their age or like what they look like or how they dress or like, I, I could give a shit less today. Like what I care about is how you make my heart feel. Um, and today I don't let people treat me crappy and I don't treat me crappy. And, um, I love people today and that's really cool because I'm, I mean, I could go through every war story you think of, you know, and we could, we could rehash it. Um, but there's no point. Right. And I only have a couple minutes. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish with this story of what this program does. Right. It says attraction rather than promotion. Right. And, um, I was sober when I met my roommate who was sitting in this room um, I was sober when I met him before and we became really good friends and he watched me relapse and he watched the progression, the fatal progression. Right. And, um, when I got sober at the beginning of the year, it took him about two months. Um, and he decided himself to get sober because of what this program has done in my life and the change that he's seen in my life. Um, and if that's not 
the miracles of this program. Like, I don't know what is, um, because for someone to like, that man has literally put me in a bathtub after I like threw up and shit on myself, like hand to God, like this man has been my savior, um, for him to know that this program works and like want to try it himself is that's such a miracle. Um, and I couldn't do it without every single person in this room. So I'm extremely grateful. Um, I love Lee very much and uh, I love each of you guys like because you're just family, dude. Like, that's all we are here. Oh. So that's all. Do we have to keep going?